Back in 1996, an incredibly rare storm was about to form in a very unlikely location. In mid-September, an upper-level, low-pressure system moved into the Great Lakes region. Around this time, Lake Huron's waters were unusually warm, about 18 to 20 degrees Celsius, or 64 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. As that cold upper air passed directly over the relatively warm lake, instability was created. This then triggered a severe thunderstorm. Here's an area of low pressure that is spinning across the Great Lakes, and therein lies a problem. We've seen some scattered showers, and at times the rain has been quite heavy. The winds over the lake were intense, around 75 miles per hour. Thankfully, these strong winds were mainly over the lake itself and not the surrounding land. However, some shoreline areas did report power outages, downed trees, and minor flooding. But overall, the damage was relatively low. So it sounds like a typical thunderstorm over the Great Lakes. What's the big deal? Well, here is a satellite image of that storm. What does it look like? It kind of looks like a hurricane. In fact, essentially, it was a hurricane. Here's the thing, that cold core low system eventually transitioned to a warm core cyclone, which is very typical of a tropical storm or hurricane. It also clearly has an eye-like feature surrounded by spiral rain bands. On top of all of this, it produced winds in a category one hurricane range around 70 miles per hour. And it definitely captured the attention of local meteorologists. And I want you to notice as this goes into motion, the swirling effect, the counterclockwise rotation of that area of low pressure. So a very unstable atmosphere here. And with the colder air aloft, we're getting a, almost a lake effect. So to recap, it had a warm core, a symmetrical structure with an eye, and category one hurricane force winds. So was it a hurricane? Well, the National Hurricane Center has not officially called this storm a hurricane, mostly because it formed in an unusual setting outside of the tropics. However, meteorologists who have studied this event have called it a tropical cyclone, which means yes, it was the same storm as a hurricane. Because remember, hurricanes are a subcategory of tropical cyclones. So yeah, a hurricane formed over the Great Lakes. Thankfully, it was less of a disaster and more of a meteorological curiosity. But that brings us to today's video's topic, out of place hurricanes slash tropical cyclones. From spinning hurricane-like storms over the Midwest to full-fledged medicanes in the Mediterranean. Today, we're going over several strange out of place hurricanes. Let's get into it. So let's actually start off with the Midwest. Yes, the Midwest. Do hurricanes occur in the Midwest? Well, sometimes you see these maps of hurricane paths and you kind of see them strike Texas and the Gulf of Mexico. But then after they make landfall, they kind of keep their shape for just a little bit over the central US. And that got me thinking, what are some hurricanes that held their hurricane-like strength deep into the United States? Did any hurricanes reach Iowa, Nebraska, or Minnesota? Surprisingly, yes. One somewhat recent example is Hurricane Ike that occurred in 2008. Hurricane Ike is actually one of the worst hurricanes on record in terms of fatalities and impact. 74 were killed in Haiti and 113 were killed in the United States. Overall, it was a category four major hurricane with top wind speeds of 145 miles per hour. And Hurricane Ike was massive. In fact, it caused damage all the way from Louisiana to Texas. Of course, we're interested in its inland destruction and Hurricane Ike is known for keeping its form and shape as it crossed into the United States. If you take a look at its meteorological history, you can see that as it entered Texas, it still held on to its tropical storm strength up towards Arkansas. But if you look at satellite imagery, it still has quite a bit of rotation. Do you see how it still has that hurricane-like shape well into the United States. Remnants tracked into Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and beyond. It even reached parts of Pennsylvania. In fact, there were wind speeds of 75 miles per hour reported in Ohio. I mean, that's category one strength winds in Ohio. Hurricane Ike is even more unusual than most inland hurricanes because most hurricanes usually just become kind of a rainstorm by this point, but Hurricane Ike had much tighter circulation for quite a long time. It acted more like an inland hurricane. Another great example of this is Hurricane Carla in 1961. This was also a category four hurricane that hit Texas. But when looking at that meteorological history, you can see it goes way up there, way up into Greenland. Absolutely insane. And this hurricane, by the way, did spawn 
tons of tornadoes throughout Kansas and Oklahoma. Now, while not technically a hurricane, I still want to mention Tropical Storm Cristobal, which made landfall in Louisiana on June 7th, 2020. What's crazy about this is it held on to its tropical storm strength way longer than any tropical storm or even hurricane on record. I mean, this thing was a tropical depression all the way up to Iowa slash Wisconsin. That's insane. Here is radar imagery from that storm. I mean, that thing is still rotating well within Iowa slash Wisconsin. It wasn't until June 9th that Cristobal became an extra tropical storm. And this occurred while it was situated over northeastern Iowa. This is the furthest northwest a tropical system has ever dissipated over North America in recorded history. It was a bit of a news story as well. As Cristobal flirted with Wisconsin, a love affair was born. Yeah, I can't believe this. This is something, something new for Wisconsin. This is so rare for our, never for the Midwest. It's pretty cool. I actually said today that I was happy to be here because I kind of get to experience it. Another rather anomalous tropical storm that did something strange over the central U.S. was Tropical Storm Aaron in 2008. So pretty much every single time a hurricane or tropical storm goes over land, it immediately weakens significantly. But for some strange reason, this specific tropical storm, Tropical Storm Aaron, strengthened over western Oklahoma. In fact, it got so strong that Oklahoma City received quite a bit of damage. Winds were reported to be over 85 miles per hour. That would easily classify it as a Category 1 hurricane. However, it was never officially updated to be a hurricane. Kind of a weird situation though. I mean, look at this radar imagery. You could clearly see an eye forming. Pretty unusual for tropical storms. But yes, not technically a hurricane, so we're gonna move on to the next entry in today's list. And this time, we're going to Europe to talk about Medicanes, AKA Mediterranean Tropical Cyclones. Every once in a while, if meteorological conditions line up, you can get tropical storms in the Mediterranean Sea. I mean, they look like many hurricanes. One great example of this occurred on September 17th, 2020. On that day, Cyclone Ianos formed over the Ionian Sea. It was initially a low pressure system, but unusually warm Mediterranean waters, which were around 80 degrees plus Fahrenheit, fueled its intensification. For this reason, it quickly organized into a tropical-like cyclone with an eye, a very rare sight for the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, on September 18th, it did make landfall over Greece. This resulted in at least four people being killed, as well as severe flooding and landslides. Thousands were forced to evacuate as tons of towns were completely flooded. Overall, the winds from this Medicaine did reach 100 miles per hour, making it equivalent to a Category 2 hurricane. This storm is particularly significant because while Medicaines in general are rare, usually a handful or so form each decade, most of them are super weak. This one, however, was pretty strong. It's one of the strongest Medicaines ever observed, and it really did produce true hurricane force wind speeds. It caused quite a bit of a disruption in Greece, and of course, it did have that eye. You gotta have that eye. Some predict that Medicaines may become more frequent in the future. For the next entry, we're gonna talk about hurricanes that occurred outside of hurricane season. Everyone thinks of hurricane season as, you know, July slash August through October, that typical hurricane season, but sometimes they can occur in January. One such example is Hurricane Polly, which formed in January in 2016. Specifically, this hurricane formed on January 7th and lasted all the way until January 15th. Surprisingly, it did peak as a category two hurricane with wind speeds of 100 miles per hour. Here is the path of the hurricane, and you might be curious, where the heck even is this? It essentially occurred over the open ocean, but the island chain of Kiribati was heavily impacted. In fact, the hurricane actually caused a cargo ship to run aground near the coast of Kiribati, killing four people. On top of all of this, there was major coastal flooding. Hurricane Polly is significant because it breaks the two most important rules of hurricanes. One, it formed in January, it's not allowed. And two, it formed extremely close to the equator, only 85 miles north of the equator. Look at this map of all hurricane paths. See how there's this line of uh, no hurricanes? Well, that's because that's where the equator is located and hurricanes cannot form there because of the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect comes from the Earth's rotation. 
It's what causes tropical cyclones to spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere or clockwise in the southern hemisphere. So a hurricane can't spin on the equator, but they can get pretty close. Typhoon Vimai in 2001 holds the record as the closest tropical cyclone to form near the equator. It developed at 1.4 degrees north latitude in the South China Sea, or about 97 miles from the equator. Now, technically it's classified as a tropical storm, but it did have wind speeds of 85 miles per hour, which means it should be a category one typhoon. This storm did bring flooding and landslides to Eastern Malaysia, causing $3.6 million in damage and five fatalities. Next up is a pretty wild out of place hurricane, and that is Hurricane Ophelia in 2017. If you live in Ireland or the United Kingdom, you definitely know which hurricane I'm talking about. Usually we think of hurricanes hitting Florida, Texas, the United States, but no, sometimes hurricanes actually travel all the way up to Europe. And in this specific example, Ireland and the United Kingdom. It initially formed as a tropical depression in the Eastern Atlantic Ocean on October 9th, 2017, and then strengthened all the way up to a category three hurricane making it one of the easternmost major hurricanes on record in the Atlantic Basin. Checking in on the tropics, we have Hurricane Ophelia, a Category 3 hurricane, the only major hurricane on record dating back to the 1800s to form this far northeast. It's going to impact Ireland. Yes, Ireland, as we head into the next several days as a strong extra tropical storm. Is By October 16th, it had transitioned into a post-tropical cyclone, but it still carried hurricane force winds close to Ireland and the United Kingdom, with peak wind speeds around 115 miles per hour. On October 16th, gusts of up to 119 miles per hour were recorded near Fastnet Rock off the coast of County Cork. These are the highest wind speeds ever recorded in Ireland. There were even 10 minute sustained wind speeds of 70 miles per hour, recorded near Rochester Point, also in County Cork. 360,000 people went without power during the storm and there were three indirect fatalities. Interestingly, over the UK, specifically England and Wales, Saharan dust filled the sky above. These hazy skies created an orangish, reddish looking sun. And you can kind of see this effect when looking at satellite imagery. See how it's kind of pulling up air from the Saharan desert right there, getting sucked in towards the United Kingdom? Pretty sweet. In the end, its Far East strength and impact on Northern Europe makes Hurricane Ophelia in 2017 one of the most out of place hurricanes on record. Two other European countries that get hit by hurricanes on extremely rare occasions are Spain and Portugal. Every once in a blue moon, you have a little hurricane that forms just west of these two countries that slowly drifts east over the Iberian Peninsula. One such example was Hurricane Vince in 2005. This hurricane had wind speeds of 75 miles per hour, making it officially a category one storm. The cover. This, you see it zipping off the side of the screen. This is how unusual, I mean, we're, we're going now to Tropical Storm Vince. Now, as of the 11 p.m. advisory, centered about 56 miles south, southwest of southwestern Portugal. And if you look closely here, you might notice our screen goes black right at the edge. It's so far to the east, our maps, we're having trouble getting our maps out. If this makes landfall as a tropical system, it, since the been keeping records, I don't think we've seen an actual tropical system still classified as a tropical storm or hurricane make it all the way to the European coastline. Thankfully though, there were no fatalities reported. According to the National Hurricane Center, this is the only official hurricane to strike the Iberian Peninsula. However, back in 1842, according to some historic data, a pretty strong hurricane may have hit the area. Next up, I'm talking about the West Coast in the US. Yes, on rare occasions, tropical cyclones can indeed impact the West Coast. Usually they impact parts of Mexico though, and sometimes those remnants can reach up into the deserty areas of the United States, sometimes causing significant rainfall in places like Nevada. Hurricane Nora in 1997, while technically not a category one hurricane over the US, it was a category one hurricane over Baja, California. And interestingly, it brought a lot of rainfall to Nevada. You know that state that's like an, an entire desert? Yeah. Some other similar hurricane examples include Hurricane Kathleen in 1976 and Hurricane Hillary in 2023. But with this entry, we're talking about the extremely rare 1858 San Diego hurricane, the only known tropical cyclone to have ever impacted California. See, California 
There's some cold water off the coast of California, so hurricanes rarely form in this area, or strike in this area, I should say. But that was not the case in 1858. This Category 1 hurricane with wind speeds around 80 miles per hour caused quite a bit of damage to San Diego. It uprooted tons of trees, and it destroyed several homes, mostly from substantial rainfall. Of course, this happened so long ago, we don't actually know the exact impact. The amount of fatalities are unknown. The amount of damage is unknown. But still, an incredibly rare storm that was definitely out of place. Here's something that's pretty interesting though. Take a look at the 1975 Pacific hurricane season. Look at all these hurricane paths over here. And whoa, what is this? What is going on over here? This was actually an unnamed storm that became a hurricane further north than pretty much any hurricane on record. Thankfully, it didn't cause any damage. It essentially occurred over the ocean, but it did form an eye. So, that eye. You gotta have the eye. But we're moving on to the next geographical location, Canada. Yes, Canada has been hit by tropical cyclones and hurricanes in the past. One of the more intriguing examples was Hurricane Michael in 2000. Because this hurricane didn't just impact Canada, it impacted Newfoundland, which is way up there. It initially developed in the Central Atlantic on October 15th, 2000, where it would eventually strengthen into a Category 2 hurricane with wind speeds around 100 miles per hour. It then took a northeastward track heading straight towards Newfoundland. By this point, it did transition to a post-tropical storm. However, it still had hurricane force winds. There were some power outages and heavy rainfall that did cause localized flooding. While not the most catastrophic hurricane on record, it still stands out as one of Canada's most unusual hurricanes. Finally, let's talk about the 2004 cyclone Katarina. This is an insane storm. Let me show you a map of South Atlantic hurricanes. Ready? Pull up the map. This is the only one ever recorded, ever. This graphic shows the paths of every single hurricane, and they occur all over the place. But way over here, Katarina stands alone. So a little background, the South Atlantic Ocean is often referred to as a hurricane desert. Very, very rare for a hurricane to form in this area. This is due to strong wind shear, which usually tears apart storms, as well as cooler sea surface temperatures. The atmospheric conditions are also unfavorable for cyclone formation. But somehow, in 2004, Hurricane Katarina broke all these rules and became a significant hurricane. And it was also a pretty impactful storm. Overall, 40 people were killed. It also caused $350 million worth of damage. Crops were devastated, and psychologically, people were shocked. People just assumed in Brazil that they couldn't get hit by hurricanes, and then all of a sudden they get hit by one out of nowhere. People were not prepared at all. What's insane is if you look at satellite imagery from this cyclone, it looks like any other hurricane. It's pretty much indistinguishable. Look at that eye. Classic hurricane eye. This was a full-fledged hurricane. Out of all the out-of-place hurricanes that we've talked about in today's video, this one takes the cake. It's the first and only ever documented in the South Atlantic Ocean, and it highlights that under rare circumstances, hurricanes can pretty much form anywhere, as long as there's warm water. To this day, in Brazil, people still refer to this as the impossible storm, because the conditions needed for this to happen were nearly impossible. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more weather slash natural phenomena slash weird historical weather events and stuff like that. Love you guys. Stay safe this hurricane season. We'll see you in the next video.